And then let's talk about lawmakers in Florida voting on a ban, although it might not be the one that you're thinking of. Obviously, the past few weeks, there's been a lot of talk about guns and legislation around guns in Florida, but what I'm talking about today is child marriage. And for multiple reasons with this story, I think it is important that we share Sherry Johnson's story. Sherry Johnson's rapist was a church deacon who started attacking her when she was nine years old. And by the time she was 10, she was pregnant with his child. And reportedly, when her church found out about the crimes, they pressured the mother to have the daughter marry the man, which a judge approved. At the time of this marriage, she he was 11 years old and he was 20. And reportedly the abuse continued for years and during that time, Johnson gave birth to five more kids before she escaped the marriage. Now her child marriage happened 47 years ago, but many children today can still legally get married. And so Sherry has spent the last six years fighting to make sure no child goes through what she did. Which then brings us to current law in Florida. Now currently in Florida, if you're 16 or 17 years old, you can get married, but you have to have the consent of both of your parents. That is, unless there is a pregnancy involved, in which case there is no minimum age for marriage as long as a judge approves. And according to a frontline analysis of child marriage in the United States, more than 16,000 minors were married in Florida between 2000 and 2015. And a legislative staff analysis showed that between 2012 and 2016, over 1,800 marriage licenses were issued in Florida to couples when at least one party was a minor. This included a 13-year-old, seven 14-year-olds, and 29 15-year-olds. There was even an example where a guy who was 90 years old was able to marry a 16 or 17-year-old. So that said, on Friday, Sherry was hailed as a hero because the Florida legislature passed a bill changing changing rules for child marriage. State lawmakers have repeatedly cited Sherry Johnson as an inspiration to change the law. And while there were some initial disagreements because the House wanted carve-outs for certain 16 and 17 year olds, ultimately we now have a single bill. A bill that's been approved by both Florida House and Senate. It is headed to the governor's desk and it sets limits on the marriage of 17 year olds. Pregnancy is no longer a factor. And now anyone marrying a 17 year old can't be more than two years older and the child would need parental consent. And it's essentially a done deal. Governor Rick Scott said that he will sign the bill. What's also interesting about the bill is that it was almost universally approved in the House, it was passed by a vote of 109 to 1. The single no vote came from Republican Representative George Moritis. And while he didn't say anything on the floor, if we look about a month before to a quote that he gave, it kind of gives some insight. At that time, he said, I'm particularly focused on the pregnancy aspect of it. I don't want the message to be that it's better to not get married. So there was that. Now, all of this said about Florida, it's important to point out that this is also a nationwide issue. While 18 is typically the minimum age, every state seems to have legal loopholes or exceptions allowing marriage at a younger age. According to Unchained, at last, a group campaigning to abolish child marriage. At least 207,468 minors were married in the United States between 2000 and 2015. In the last two years, we've seen Virginia, Texas, Kentucky, New York, all voting to ban or limit child marriages, but we've also seen other states struggle. New Hampshire was considering a bill to raise the minimum marriage age, but that was killed after a recent push from a handful of Republicans. In Tennessee, House Republicans also killed a bill late last week that sought to ban child marriage, but this also seemed to be part of a bigger thing. Attorney and former state Senator David Fowler argued that it would hurt his effort to challenge the Supreme Court's 2015 decision that legalized same-sex marriage. So therefore, according to Fowler, if the state were to move forward changing anything around marriage, it would then disqualify that they really thought that all marriages were nullified by the Supreme Court decision. And ultimately, while it would make a change here, it would be self-defeating in the Supreme Court. And this move was outrageous to a lot of people because essentially you're dealing with a situation where, where the argument for, for not shutting down child marriages is you're not a fan of gay marriages. And considering the stories around child marriage that have been coming out of Tennessee, it can be infuriating. Frontline's investigation found that Tennessee had the youngest married children in the country. This, including 10-year-old girls who have been married to men between the ages of 24 to 31. We've also seen a story of an 11-year-old boy who had been married to a 27-year-old woman in Tennessee. And then that brings us to Missouri, whose current laws are the most lenient for child marriages. It has even been called a destination wedding spot for child marriages in some circles. Part of the reason for that is Missouri is the only state that requires only the signature of one parent, even if the other parent objects for ages of 15, 16, and 17 years old. Additionally, like half of all states, Missouri has no minimum age to marry, but it requires anyone 14 and under to get a judge's approval. Which, if you haven't picked up on by this point, I think is batshit crazy. We're talking about people who are in sexual relationships that are considered statutory rape. And in some cases, we're seeing the children marry to protect the partners from prison. I mean, we're talking about situations where from a legal standpoint, it is an understood that this person is so young, they cannot consent to sex. But because there's a baby or someone approved a 10 year old marrying someone between the age of 20, 24 and 31, it's all good. That's crazy. It feels insane that we have to say there's a law to stop this, but based off of a lot of the reporting and stuff that we've found out over the years, 
it needs to be done. But that's it. That's where I'm going to end that story today and pass the question off to you. What are your What are your thoughts around this story? I know we have an international audience, some some diverse thoughts, and so I'd love to know what you think in those comments down below. Children. Then, in a quickie update to a story we covered last week, Martin Shkreli, of course, the farmer bro. Where we left off, the judge said that Shkreli was responsible for 10.4 million dollars in losses, and one of the main reasons that number would likely matter is it could affect his sentencing, which was Friday. Shkreli's lawyers were trying to get less than two years. Prosecutors want 15. The judge kind of just split it down the middle and gave him seven years in prison. Also, according to a Vice correspondent, before he was sentenced, Martin Shkreli just started crying in the courtroom. And also, another point that that same writer pointed out, it's important to remember that Shkreli is serving seven years not because he raised the price massively. We're talking 5,000% of a drug that helps people live their lives, saves their lives. A disgusting, unforgivable thing that people in the pharmaceutical industry do on a regular basis, but because he defrauded other rich people and now he has to pay the price. And I'm not saying that Shkreli should not have faced punishment for that, but it, it is just very telling who gets prosecuted for what. But